The internet is a key engine of contemporary life in China. Along with the mobile phone, which people increasingly use to get online, it's hard for many Chinese to imagine a world without the web. Stanford University's China 2.0 program examines the impact of the internet on China and increasingly the impact of China on the internet. Stanford alumni have played a key role in creating and growing leading internet firms in the US and in China. Stanford also played a key role in the first connection between China and the internet. The Stanford Linear Accelerator Center, or SLAC, is operated by Stanford University for the US Department of Energy. Along with the Institute of High Energy Physics in Beijing, SLAC established the first connection of China to the internet on March 2, 1993. Dr. Les Cottrell and Dr. Xu Rongsheng are two of the original pioneers who connected China to the Internet. Ma Toki uh, sent a proposal to the uh, government of the United States, DOE, as example. The proposal was accepted by the Department of Energy and a Chinese delegation of physicists visited SLAC. In 1991, they came out and I was invited to a meeting with them and they asked for help. Uh, whether I could do anything and they said well why don't you come on over and see if you can help us and I thought well never having been to China who would refuse I asked them well what do they have in the way of phone connections they said oh we have phones you dial up oh you you call the number and the operator puts you through and I thought well this isn't going to work too well so I went and talked to the director of the laboratory um, a guy called Pif Panoski very nice person and he was heavily in favor and he says, look, what I really want is I don't this want, want this to be a token. I want this to be where we really do something useful. And this is a useful experiment, and it's not just a token. So I mentioned to him that there's a problem here, Pief. We've, got, we've only got two phone lines, and those, or we've got a number of phone lines, but you have to make them for a, an operator, and it's not going to work you know, for direct connections. So Pief said, I, I know someone who's well connected with the Chinese bureaucracy, a guy called T.D. Lee, who was a Nobel Prize winner and very well respected. I get in contact with him, and he did. And T.D. Lee magically managed to arrange things so that when I arrived in China, three weeks later, they took me into the room and I said, do you have any phones? You know, knowing this is going to be a disaster. And they showed me two twisted pair lines and they said, these are your phones. Now I've been smart enough to stack in my bags a couple of uh, modems. So we took the, the lower speed modem, which is 2400 bits a second, nothing today, and we tried to connect it up, it didn't work. So I said, well, we've got this more modern one, 9600, we'll try that one. Bingo, it works. By the time I left in two weeks, they had a connection. They could call up on a regular basis to Slack. They could send mail backwards and forwards. They could leave the connection up, but it was expensive. So as soon as I got back, I got in contact with our funding agency, the Department of Energy in the US, and I said, look, you know, there's an opportunity here, we could do something. Can we get money to put in a satellite link from here to there? So let's consult suggested invite the AT&T to help. By AT&T, people said they can use a satellite link for 64K. AT&T established the connection to China from an earth station at Point Reyes, north of San Francisco, via satellite to a downlink in northeast Beijing. The next step was to connect to IHEP on the west side of Beijing. So they managed to get a microwave dish that got them across to the center of Beijing to a hotel where they had another microwave dish. That went pretty quickly, maybe a, a two or three months. Then they found a fiber that would get them from that place to within two miles of uh, Institute of High Energy Physics. And then the last two miles took a year to get the copper link from the, the fiber link you know, connection to the Institute of High Energy Physics. While the first internet users in China were an elite group of scientific researchers, it wasn't long before the public got a chance to go online. Getting online, though, wasn't cheap. In 1995, PCs cost over $1,700 and only 1.5 million were sold in China that year, mainly to government and business users. Getting a phone line installed took months and cost around $600. Internet access cost around $75 a week for 40 hours of access at just 9.6 kbps. From that initial drive by Slack and IHEP starting in 1991, IHEP became the first internet user in China in 1993. In May 1995, the public got its first chance to get online when Beijing Post and Telecom Administration introduced its China Net service, followed by Guangdong, Liaoning, Zhejiang and Shanghai. 
By October 1996, 14 cities had launched ChinaNet services. Internet users grew from 5,000 in 1995 to 120,000 in 1996 and are forecasted by BDA to reach 480 million by the end of 2010. In 2008, China's internet population surpassed that of the US. China is on track to hit 770 million online users by 2014, over two and a half times the online population of the US. Over 30 years have passed since Deng Xiaoping initiated economic reforms in China with his famous Southern Tour. While the internet has been around for less than half this time, its impact on the Chinese economy, as well as society, has arguably been as dramatic.